Today I'm going to take you on a quick whirlwind tour of some of the cool and exciting features of Photoshop Touch. Photoshop Touch is the mobile version of Photoshop which you can use on an iPad, an iPhone or other Android devices. I've got a picture of an Alaskan scene here and what I'm going to do is just take you on a quick uh, tutorial where I'm just going to introduce another picture and just, just going to show you some of the versatility that uh, Photoshop Touch has to offer. Possibly not the tool you'd use for your finished projects but ideal for sketching out ideas especially if you're feeling creative while you're on the train or something like that. So what I want to do is add another picture to this. So I'm going to go to the layers panel on the right that you can see here. Hit the plus icon and add a new photo layer. And you can see this brings me now to the organizer and I can select images from my local photo library um, on the iPad, I, uh, my Creative Cloud account, the iPad camera, Google or Facebook. Actually what I'm going to do is just choose Google and I'm going to just type in, I've already typed in Parrot there and that's now, um, Photoshop Touch is now searching Google for images of parrots and also images of parrots that have been marked for reuse. So I should be okay to use those. Just double check by hitting the copyright icon there and you can see that I can check only use images labeled for reuse or reuse with modification. And so I know that pretty much all these images should be okay. So let's click on this parrot here and you can see that I can also see the link at the bottom here in the context URL. Worth clicking on that just to make sure you're 100% okay to use this image. So let's hit add and you can see that's now imported it into the Photoshop Touch workspace with the transform bounding boxes there so we could just resize our image. It's a little bit smaller than our background image so just to make sure the branch lines up we can just literally grab those corners and expand the bird out. Let's hit the tick to commit and you can see now on the bottom we have our two layers so we can just turn that on and off. And what we want to do is get rid of this uh, green background so that it looks like our parrot has actually been uh, transported to Alaska. So we're going to go over here to the tools panel and we're going to select our scribble selection tool which you can find here and this really is a great little tool. Got a tick here. What I want to do is just mark out areas. I'm just painting onto the bird the areas that I want to keep. So these are in green so hopefully you can see that on top of the green parrot. I've gone a little bit over there and now I'm just going to hit the cross and probably no surprise that we've got a red mark now. So that's going to cause a little bit of a problem. I can feel that. So I'm just marking out the areas that I want to extract. In fact I wish this feature was in Photoshop because it's just very nice and intuitive and you can see it's done a fairly good job so let's just refine that so I've zoomed in using the just the pinch and what have you gestures and I'm just going to refine that area there and let's just a little bit over there that's where I went wrong on the first selection and let's just try again so that's looking, uh, that's looking okay. For the sake of uh, speed in this little walkthrough, I'll just leave it at that. And let's go up to the selection tools now at the top here. And look, we've even got the refine edge tool. So let's just click on that. And these areas, if I just gesture in, zoom in, I can just use my brush to just get some nice detail back in those areas, you know, just like hair, where the transition is a little bit more detailed. Look, it's done a terrific job of that. Let's pinch just to zoom out and let's go with that for the time being. And We should have a nice detailed selection now. It's just taking a few moments to do its business. And here we go, you can see we've got a nice detailed selection. So let's just go to the plus icon at the bottom of the layers panel and just hit a layer from that selection. Hit done and you can see if I just turn off that background layer you can see that we now have our bird just selected. Let's just deselect that, so get rid of those marching ants. And you can see just very, very quickly, we've created this very simple composite. If you're just sketching out an idea, this is a great way to just get it down quickly if you're on the move.
Looking at some of the other features, you can see that we've got uh, adjustments here. And uh, all the usual suspects are here from black and white to curves. And you can see if I just click on that quickly, let's just reset that. And up to the RGB, I could just add an S curve to boost my contrast. I can get creative with my colors and make them pop a little bit more. See, we can accentuate those reds or get a sort of cross process look. I'm just being very crude here. Let's just click OK. And there you can see we can even refine. We've all got also got our special effects. So we could add any one of these two. Uh, just like Photoshop, these uh, fo the filters in Photoshop, these need to be used with caution and don't get overzealous with them. And then under the ampersand, we have some other tools to crop, text, warp, and even lens flare. Let's just click on that. And you can see just how intuitive it is. Just with your finger, you can just move the lens flare around, change the intensity of it. So just click OK. And you can just see that very, very, very quickly, with some very intuitive tools, we can make a very basic composite using Photoshop Touch. Thanks for watching.